Okay. All right. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And um, I am actually joined by a couple of our licensees. So Peter Broberg and Robin Flynn are going to help out in our conversations today. Um, so they've been a licensees for, for quite a few years. I, yeah, I don't know you. how many years, yeah. but it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. And been using a lot of the sales and marketing um, strategies inside of Pure Bookkeeping. Um, so we're, we're just going to walk, work through some of the strategies and uh, just uh, give you some, some skills, um, some information uh, that might help you in growing your business um, and building your clients and making sure that you're on target with the clients that you want to also work with. Um, so if you're, if you're not sure of what pure bookkeeping is, we provide um uh, systems for bookkeepers so we help bookkeepers help great bookkeepers build businesses that they love um and that's what we're all about we provide the systems around their bookkeeping their sales and marketing and their hr so if you um we can talk more about that later on but today it's all about how to get new clients and talking about the seven proven ways of getting new clients um and all that goes before that even and that's one of the things that I did want to talk about is you know what happens before we actually get our clients in understanding the type of client that we want to get and and attracting the right client as well so before we get started though I am going to um set a launch a poll and the poll is pretty much asking us or asking you um just a few questions for us to understand where you are um, in your journey and uh, where do you currently find clients and the activities that you would like to do um, so that we can sort of talk to, you know, the things that you want to learn today um, and anything else that you might like to learn as well that, um, that we could put on the agenda for another one of our other um, sessions. So. If you could answer, just jump through and answer those four questions. That would be awesome. Pop into the chat as well if you wanted to let me know a bit more about yourself or you, where you are in your journey and what you're wanting to learn today. Um, feel free to pop it into the chat. So if anybody doesn't know where the chat is, let me know. Um, we also have a reactions button where you can give me a thumbs up or a hands up or whatever. Um, Okay, so can you actually see the poll? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you, do you have you responded, Robin? Did you want to? I haven't. I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I didn't want to put in my my sort of things and lead the conversation. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought I'd leave it for everybody else. No, that's okay. I've got nobody participated. That's all. I'm just wondering if it's actually working. You, Jane, you still, have? I'm still filling it in, Katrina. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No yeah, awesome. So just let me know when you've finished that and um, we will just go through that. I'm literally having no, is it a big survey? <laughs> I think it's nearly finished. Nearly finished. <laughs> there, are, there are a oh, few okay. things to consider, yeah. Yeah, there are. Awesome. So uh, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. And um, Paige has told me that there's nine out of 18, so I'm just not seeing ah. the, the ah. response, so it's not working for me. That's good. As long as we've got some responses and then, Paige, you might need to uh, let me know what the responses are. So just let me know when you're finished. Finished. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I might. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Paige. I'm going to end the poll. Are we all good? All done? Yep. Okay. Oh, somebody said no. Um, we still have 13 out of 18 responses. So it's okay. only a few. Okay. There's a few more coming. Okay. I'll leave it up for a little bit while we get talking. Okay. So, once that poll is done, um, we are going to start looking at the, the different stages of getting new clients. So 
Um, the way I see it with the, the stages of getting new clients is firstly attracting the right client. And we'll talk into that a little bit more about who that right client is. Then converting the client. So then we'll talk about um, how you do convert the prospects to become a client. So the tools that you can use and the conversations that you can have around the conversion and then the onboarding as well. So um, with the onboarding, we're not going to talk um, to that today because we want to just keep with the attracting the client and converting the client. So that's the purpose of this particular webinar today. But I see that as the three stages that you need to consider in getting new clients is attracting, converting, and onboarding. So let's let's get started. I am going to stop the poll and we will just go with our responses. Okay, so I'm going to actually, I can share the results. Look at that. I'm not sure if that's going to help me. Can you see the results? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I can't, Paige, <laughs> if you can send me a screenshot of I the results. Send you a screenshot. Yeah. Is there any surprises in there? Do you, Robin, do you want to read out some of the responses? Um, yeah, so um, I was just having a quick look actually at where do you currently find your clients and most people get them from referrals. So that's interesting. Um, mm. And nobody's getting them from software directories. <laughs> um, there's a few people who can't find clients. So that's, um, yeah, would certainly be able to help people out with that today. And accountants, which is something that I find that I get, um, yeah, I like to use accountants because they're sort of pre-qualified then. You know that they're looking for a bookkeeper and they're serious. Um, and people are interested in effective networking that's what they want to talk about, effective networking, um, creating a social media plan. Um, Katrina, I know you ran, you've run webinars on that, setting up social media plans for people keeping licensees before. Yeah, um, yep, we've got some yeah. links of different webinars um, that I've got links to that um, we could talk about as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And confidence yeah. in spelling is something mm -hmm. that people are interested to learn about. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for that. I've got the screenshots of that as well. So I can flick through those. So awesome. Thank you. Now, let me just see if I can stop sharing that one. That's it. Awesome. Okay, so let's get started in the, uh, get back to my presentation notes. So what I'm going to do is share um, our Pure Bookkeeping PB Central so that we can start talking through uh, some of the content of today. So I figured rather than creating a whole lot of slides, I would just show some of the um, things inside of PB Central so that we can talk around them. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I want to talk about is the foundations, your marketing foundations and something um, around your business identity um, and making sure that you're considering your branding um, and your vision and your mission for your business mm. so that you don't go off on a tangent and build a business that you don't love or the clients that you don't want to deal with. Mm. Um, and, and also, you know, when we're, we're talking with accountants, we are building relationships with them. We're building relationships with anybody that we're net networking with. So it's really important to, um, to really focus on what we want to do for our business. So I know, Robin, this is probably one of the conversations that I wanted, you know, really keen to have you on the call today because, the, you know, you are... Um, uh, our golden child or I don't, I don't know what the word is but like it's not golden round. child but no I am really clear on what I want um in yeah. my business and also for my life so um I think particularly when you're talking to a big group of bookkeepers a lot of the the push or the feel is around growing around growing your business and put, adding staff and that kind of thing. And I think that's that's really great and that really suits some people. 
but it doesn't mean that you're not successful if that's not the direction that you want to go in. And so for me, that wasn't the direction I wanted. Um, I wanted to have a lifestyle business where I could enjoy it, I could work, I could travel, I could um, not be too stressed. You know, I, I wanted to make good money and um, enjoy my work, which I do. So I just had to be really clear on that. I think I just want to add a caveat to this too, and that is that I'm always really careful to make sure that any decisions I make that I leave the door open so that um, so that I can change if I want to. So, for instance, although I have set my business up so that I can, um, you know, yeah, like I said, travel pre-COVID, <laughs> I could travel and um, I like just working with just myself in the business um, by having the support of pure bookkeeping and having those um, systems around me. If I decided I wanted to scale, if something changed in my life, and I wanted to change, I'm ready to jump straight away. Like I can, I can just start getting more clients quickly. I can add staff. I've got all of the resources. So um, yeah, I am careful when I'm making decisions that I leave the, I don't close doors so that I can't make a change if I want to. So um, yeah. And one of the things I just, I'll just keep talking if that's right. One of the things that's, it's really hard to, um, to go, oh, well, what do I want in my business? Like, if you sort of think about that, it's really, it's a bit tricky. You sort of go, well, I want to make money. Um, but I did um, something where I have, and I've got a list, I'm just looking to the right because I've actually written it down. I have the ultimate guide to my unhappiness. <laughs> so I just spent some time writing out, if I wanted to just live my most unhappy life, what would that look like? And so I've got things like staying home all the time, being sedentary, not getting out, working for someone, being poor, being stressed, um, working for cheap or for free. We accidentally do fall into that quite easily. Um, and so I've, I've got a big list of sort of what would, if I was going to be unhappy, what would that look like? And by doing that, every time I come up against a decision that I've got to make, I can, it's easy to identify. I will, I need to actually move away from that. So um, if I'm wanting to be able to travel and work, um, so I guess location independent and time independent as well. Like I don't want to be stuck in nine to five. I want to be able to start work at seven or eight in the morning and then have a long lunch, go out somewhere for lunch and then work in the afternoon. I don't want to be tied to times. So having said that, I don't want to be taking on clients that I have to be on site for one day a week or something like that. So um, just being clear about what I want and um, making sure that I'm always actively working towards that. So if that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. It's um, one of the things when I was building my business, it was around the pricing. It was the value. And in like it was, I don't know, 2000 and something, um, it was like $65 an hour. So it was way, it was quite high for then back you know 10 years ago or 15 years ago um and it was a plan of mine it was always to go in high it wasn't I wasn't going to do work for people that either couldn't afford me or didn't value me or wasn't that size of business or you know the services that they required so and I knew I already had staff when I became a pure bookkeeping licensee so it was like I had I want to pay my staff well I want to bring the clients in and have them value what we do. Mm. And that was my it's sort of almost like a non-negotiable. It was like where I would start. So when you are, you know, you might be just starting out. There's a, um, Actually, there's quite a lot of people that aren't just starting out on this call today. They've already got clients and they're wanting to fill out their list. So you don't just want to bring in a whole lot of um, busyness. You want mm. to be quite selective on who you do choose um, so that's, you know, make that determination. That's why we're spending a bit of time in talking about that right now because you can attract clients, but are they the right client for you? So that's that's a really key feature. Yeah, Peter, did you have um, um, a contribution towards that that topic, how, how you brought up 
you know, who your ideal client was and your business purpose? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, my background was um, before I started my bookkeeping business was in retail and hospitality and tourism. And that is the area that I want to focus on. And I was focusing on that up until COVID. Now, COVID put a whole stop on that and I had to make a change. And so I then focused more on trades because I was actually picking up a few trades. Mm -hmm. So you have to try and adapt to change as best you can when circumstances like COVID happened. Let's hopefully we don't have that again and we don't have to do that. But now I'm moving back now towards uh, the retail and hospitality to get so that I want to attract those as my ideal clients because of all the background that I have. Mm. Yeah, and that's that's a really important feature as well and, and is, you know, what your background is, what your experience is, what you're comfortable mm. in. And mm. inventory was one of my comfort areas. I didn't like payroll, but I was good at, I enjoyed inventory um, and Im- importing. Um, so it was there that they were the type of clients, which I don't think I actually went out and got them, but they were the type of the clients that came to me. You sort of put out you know what you're comfortable with and what you're what you know and that's the universe provides I always you know rely on putting out what you want with the universe will provide you so it's like you know I got quite a lot of inventory clients so it's understanding and because I had the experience and vending machines and um, think about the experience that you've had you know where you've come from and what you enjoy what you're passionate about as well I mean, there's all sorts of Probably. different aspects that you can bring into the business. Yeah. Mm. Um, love for anybody to put in the chat of um, what they feel their ideal client is. What have you already thought about this? Is there um, something that you know that you'd like to share? So pop it into the chat um, if anybody wants to come off mute and. and and, and talk about what their ideal client is as well. That's I'm happy for you to do that. Just put your hand up or let me know. Um, but if pop in the chat, um, yeah, Elaine, yeah, would you like to contribute? Just a question. Talking yeah. about you know your ideal client, in which you say you want that particular client because of your experience. But do you stay true to just having those types of clients? And also you, Peter, like the retail hospitality thing when you've got staff. Or do you look at your staff's strength and their experience and if they've got experience in trade, start trying to go and get for those clients for those that, I don't know. I mean, how does that, I don't have staff. So, and I'm a bit like probably everyone that started, you kind of grab for every single client that you can get because you need to put, you know, money in the bank to pay the bills. And it's only now uh-huh. that I'm starting to go, well, I can't want these. So, yeah, when you do do employing staff, how do people approach that? I'd be really interested to know. Hmm. Yeah. Did you want to I've, I've got one, I, well, I've got one staff member that's um, outsourced and she's across most of all of my clients and I've got a, um, a rate, most of my clients are trades at the moment and I've got a, now gradually picking up new retail and hospitality, but she's across both of them. But, but if you create the actual resources for your staff, so if you have a like a client bookkeeping manual, of which PB has that, um, and record all the details in there of how you do the processing for that particular client, then all staff members can come in there and actually take over a client when the income, the normal bookkeeper you can't 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 be there. So um, having those systems in place helps. Yeah, it can absolutely um, you can systemize it to the one, you know that that it's just easy to scale when you have got a particular um, niche, if you like. Um, but as, uh, was it Diana has said, I like diversity. That's what keeps me interested. I was mm. the same. I mean, a lot of people were saying to niche into certain areas, but I like that diversity of it keeping it interesting mm. as well. Um, mm. And then you find staff that also have, bring to the table a lot of different experiences as well. So you like niching to me didn't feel um uh, comfortable because i wanted the variety so then i brought in staff that were had experience in different areas Mm. so that's you know i did not need to you know put in the one system just for retails or um whatever but i enjoyed certainly enjoyed the inventory side of it but that wasn't my only clientele Mm. 
I think you can niche in not just industry as well. Like I have mm-hmm. only zero clients. I like, you know, I'm really strong with zero. And um, so that I guess I would say that that is sort of a niche as well. Um, yeah. And the types of people that you work with, the top, you know, whether you only, yeah, I think there, there are different ways of looking at what a niche is rather than just industry. Um, mm-hmm. And that can give you the diversity that you're interested in. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm just going to share my screen again. And so what we're we're talking about at the moment is your, your foundations, who you are, what do you offer and why you. Um, so that, you know, what we've spoken about today is around, you know, understanding who you are and what you do want to offer. Um, and as Robin had said about the particular services that she wanted to offer um, to get you through um, the business that you want to build. So, you know, it's good to have that mission statement um, so that you become really clear in where your company's direction is going to go. Uh, so that, that's really, really important. Um, now, let's have a look at um, your website. Does anybody um, pop in the chat who has got a website or who needs assistance uh, with a website and what they're what they're currently doing with your website. So, um, do you have a website? Are you wanting to have a website? Do you need any assistance in discussing a website? Because what we've uh, got here is a template around a website. So, Robin, you created a website based on a template. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just like. Uh, perhaps talk through the choices that you made around your website and, and you know, why you decided one? Um, yeah, look, I think you need to have a web presence because it doesn't matter if you're being referred by somebody, they're still going to Google you. So you want to have a web presence. Um, I did use a template. Um, I just found that, that it was easier to have something that was already laid out. I changed all the pictures and things. I changed all of the content, but the, you know, the blocks were all set up and I sort of knew where I could put my, you know, details, my phone number and all of that kind of thing. Um, So I get, yeah, I get quite a few referrals through that. Um, I'm not taking on new clients. So I am part of a um, pupil keeping mastermind group. So we meet up once a month. And I, whenever I get inquiries, I send them on to, um, you know, one of one of those my mastermind group, and um, yeah, so they can pick them up if they want to. So um, yeah, but I, yeah, I just think that you need you do need to have a web presence. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. Pete, how, or Peter, how did you start with your website? Is um... Well, I, t- I took um, the templates from Pure Bookkeeping. So back then it was um, a little different to what you've got now, but I used that to build my website, but I didn't use a template. I tried to, this is when you first start out working and you, you say, no, I can do this. I'll do this myself to start with. So you try and do everything. Um, that I was one of those. I, I played around with, spent hours trying to get my website um, up and running, finally got it up, just didn't work. I end up getting somebody else to help me fix it, which was my son. And um, and now I've um, moved on from that now and I've got proper people that are doing my website for me now. And um, just that's just as a tip, try not to do it yourself if you if you don't know what you're doing. Just uh, get someone professional to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the, the template does, it actually provides you a template. So you, you can just plug yeah. in the information and your logo and those type of things. And, and we have a, um, a script of, you know, things to suggest to you how to say, what to say, services and all of that stuff. So it's really useful to have that as a guide yeah. um, to having that yeah. presence. So it's, yeah, Robin, were you going to say something? I find that most people read the page that's about me, so I have an about me page. Um, most people, when they've co- when they contact me, have already read that and they've decided that they want me to do their bookkeeping. Um, so it's not really even a sales call when they contact me; they've already identified that we're going to be a match. 
and um yeah i find that that's the that's the the most looked at one and also i've got my phone number on the front <laughs> that's something that if you look at websites sometimes you've got to go looking for that phone number so yeah just put the phone number on the front so they can find you <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah absolutely and now mm. elaine has asked is it important to have a logo absolutely i, I think so um yep. pete's got <laughs> peter's got his, mine mine. On his <laughs> <laughs> um, robin have you got a logo yeah, I've got a logo, but I feel like um, I feel like a logo is the kind of thing that can hold you back, and you'll spend six months trying to decide on a logo, and you don't get the work done. So don't let it stop you from like getting into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that 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 is true. I mean, we do procrastinate a lot and and stop doing you know moving forward because we do procrastinate. Um, but yeah. I just feel as if it is part of the branding and part of um, yeah. what who you stand for. And it helps with the process as well, I think, of understanding mm -hmm. what your business is all about. So you know, for my logo, for my bookkeeping business, it was very colourful and it was about growth. Mm -hmm. um, so I had these the scale of the bar chart going up with different colours and like the colours of the rainbow, they're just really bright, beautiful colours. So um, mm -hmm. it inspired me. It gave me pleasure looking at it. Um, I was proud of it um, and, and and have a tagline as well. So we do actually talk inside of the, the sales and marketing module about getting a tagline. So, um, Peter, do you have a tagline? What's yours? Uh, we monitor your books while you run your business. Nice. I've, yeah. got, I've got we're passionate about organising and streamlining the offices of small business. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mine was something like create time to grow your business. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah, it's, I, I think it, it just helps give that presence um, yeah. of who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. All right. So the next um, area that I want to jump into is having a look at your marketing plan. So let me just jump into um, the seven, our seven by five marketing plan. And the different strategies. So these are the different strategies that we have um, around getting clients. Um, so depending on where you are at in your journey, and if you're a startup, then you would do as many of these strategies and because they're very basic. And then as you grow, you as a lot of people are between that one to three year and they're just filling their continually filling filling their books. Once you've started with the strategies, you just then repeat them. So you've probably, you know, um, you know, made them, made them perfect or, you know, worked on them. You've got a system. And that's that's what pure bookkeeping is all about, is having the system when you do need clients to turn that system on. So you're flicking the switch, creating the marketing and the um the activities around building those clients out. So um, and I know, Peter and Robin, you actually did use um, some or all of these strategies um, yeah. to build your business. Is there any particular one that you feel as if you'd like to talk to? Robin, I'd, do you want to uh, go first? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Go, Robin. No, sorry. no, you go, Peter. All right, okay. Well, I'm, I'm finding that networking is the, the one that works for me the most. I've, I've actually been in a networking group for um, when did I start? Just as just when I started my business. So it was, and I did go through each one of those um, things in the marketing plan, and that was the one that worked the most. I, um, for the last 12 months in BNI, I've got revenue received of $65,000 in the last 12 months alone, just in my from my chapter, getting referrals from within there. And so that's, um, yeah, it's a no-brainer for me to go there every Tuesday morning, like I did this morning, and uh, be there and meet other network, other business owners, and um, and also outside of that as well. So yeah. Referrals are by far the best for me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I find I get a lot through um, through my website and um, an accountant's account. Um, I'm generally at the end of financial year when I send 
Um, my clients work off to the accountants. I send a really good letter to them explaining where the client's at, you know, if they've bought any assets this year, um, anything that might need to be addressed, that kind of thing. Um, I also explain where all of the reports have been stored um, so that they can access them easily. So it's just a really good overview of where the client's at so that the accountant's got the heads up before they even jump into it. And I always get back um, from the accountants once that's gone out, you know, this is great, Robin, thanks so much. You know, are you looking for more clients? So, <laughs> so I know that's only a once a year thing, but it also does open up that conversation where if, um, if you've got, you know, if you have a client that sells and, and moves on, then it's easy. You've got that contact already with the accountant. You can always go back and say, you know, I've had a client who sold. So I've got capacity if you've got anybody you'd like to send through to me. And I always then identify exactly what I'm looking for, you know, clients in the service industries, clients that are on zero, and that way you're getting clients referred to you that you actually want. Mm. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Let me share the, the screen again and go through some of these. Um, so, and this is this is something that uh, Deb Debbie Roberts, um, the co-founder of Pupil Keeping, had created as a result of um, not putting herself out there, not focusing mm. enough on marketing to win clients. She loved sitting in the books, as we all do, and it's something that um, she worked with her mentor Peter Cook to um, work out a system of how she's going to actually put herself out there set some KPIs, so that's what she ended up doing is setting KPIs. How many meetings are you having per week? And um, and then, again, she still uh, avoided having those meetings. So then uh, Peter and, and Debbie um, resulted in creating systems and to make it easier for her to go out and do these things so that she didn't have to, you know, think about it every week or what am I doing so one of the things that that was a large on um, on her agenda was a strategy around accountants and having a prospect presentation, or sorry, an accountant presentation, and going to talk to accountants. And it was like a KPI for her to meet so many accountants per month, and report back to to Peter. So she would be disappointing herself and and the process if she wasn't actually setting and meeting those KPIs. So it was forcing her out, making those appointments. Um, and also then at the end of each one of those accountant presentations was asking the accountant if they knew of another accountant that would appreciate uh, the same type of um, conversation or to be introduced to a, a preferred bookkeeper. Mm. So the, the whole system, I mean, the whole thing that we do inside of, you know, our bookkeeping business is systemizing everything. So mm. it's not unusual to systemize your own marketing strategies. So Curious to if you want to pop into the chat, what are you actually doing um, for your marketing? What's your marketing plan? What are your activities that you're doing for your marketing? Um, so we can have a bit more of a chat about what you're currently doing, what you're struggling with, um, what's not working, um, and sharing with others through the chat of what is actually working. And if anybody wants to come off mute and share their story about what's um, what's working for them as well. I'm happy to, to listen to others um, with, some, with some great positive feedback. Um, some, of the, some of these strategies are really basic, like people you know, especially when you're starting out. And we talk to, to um, bookkeepers all the time that are, you know, looking at, um, are looking at the system. Um, how do I get clients? And they want to start a business. They might be working full time, but they want to start a business. And it's just like the very first thing is to say to people that you know that you are starting a business or that you are already in business um, and that you have capacity and that you're looking for clients. So it's just having those things come out of your mouth to the right people and your friends or your networking may say, um, that I, I have a friend or I know this person that is looking for a bookkeeper, blah, blah, blah. And that's how it all starts for those startup people. And I think sometimes we, we that have been in business for a while, for those that are in one to three years, it's like, well, you forget about those basic things. Like you go to a coffee shop and you go, what system are you using? Or I can see you're struggling or 
you look really efficient. What are you using? Um, just starting a conversation um, with either people you know. Um, so, Peter or Robin, have you um, been in that instance where you've got clients in, in that way? Uh, yes, I, I have. Um, a local here in Kalamunda, there was a coffee shop and I uh, walked in there and because I've got a background in point of sale systems and I said, oh, what's your point of sale system? And so um, they showed me and then eventually I ended up uh, taking them on as a, doing their bookkeeping. So, yeah, it was well, yes. worth the, uh, well worth it. And I do look at that every time I go to a shop and look at a point of sale system, wondering what are you using? What are you using? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think I think you expect that clients will refer people to you. Like you do a good job for a client and you think they're going to tell their friends about you, but they don't because they're scared that you won't have time to look after them. So I think you do need to actually actively say to clients, hey, you know, I've got capacity on at the moment to take on one new client, two new clients, whatever. Um, I've got capacity at the moment. If you've got anybody that you think would, you know, would need a bookkeeper, feel free to mention me to them. Like actually make that contact with them because otherwise they assume you're busy and they're scared that, yeah, <laughs> you won't and have time for them. Exactly, that's exactly what happened with this one, the client I just mentioned. They mm -hmm. referred me to the local a local pub here in Kalamunda. And oh. all right, it was just perfect. Now, my ideal clients, you yeah, know, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very basic, isn't it? It's very simple a, a strategy. It's not, mm. you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to get into social media. Um, you know, it, it's just talking to people that you you with all the time. And that's one of Debbie's stories is uh, talking to a carpet cleaner that came into her house to, to clean her carpets. And she just asked them, what, who does your books? And she got them as a client in that way. Mm. Roaming around, um, I know, for, again, with Debbie, and I did the same thing when I got an office um, in a street, in a suburb, um, I'd walked the shops, the shopping centre or the um, uh, the strip into in and out of the accountants and the solicitors in the area. There was quite a lot of finance people in there and just going in and out of there and just saying that I've, you know, moved in and I do this and, and it's just having that conversation um, mm. And I know Debbie got a lot of clients in the building, office building that she had an office in um, as a result of that as well. Mm. Um, somebody mentioned social media, um, like they don't know what to post on Facebook. I find just posting something. I think um, you guys might disagree. I don't know. I don't think I've got any clients from Facebook, but clients or potential clients will check out your Facebook page. So as long as I've got something going up there semi-regularly, I think it just lets them know that, oh, yes, this person is still around. It's not a business that's sort of gone. Um, and I, I do tend to use um, like the ATO always post, you know, like don't forget to pay your super. It's nearly Baz time, things like that. I just share those with a little comment, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know, Peter, do you have an active, like do you get people not, through not as that Not as active as I'd like to be. And <laughs> um, I am planning to do a little bit of work in that area. But, uh, mm. yes, I have posted before, but I haven't probably been about a year since I've done something. So, yes, need to move on yes. that one. Mm. Yeah. But do yes. you, so you haven't got clients through, like nobody no. finds you. Facebook and goes, oh, this is who no. I want. No. Yeah, yeah I find it more of a support. Present. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I think some people get them when they get referrals through Facebook. So you might be in a in a, a group that's um, mm. I am in business in Victoria or, you know, those type of groups. And if you yep. get, if people come onto those groups and start talking about the issues that they're having with, BAS or GST or a bookkeeping something or a software or something, mm. and you're a bookkeeper, you can jump on and, and provide advice. And that's the way to have that engaging conversation. Mm. Yeah. I find it not so effective if you're just posting, um, pasting, posting on a, you know, your page, unless you're getting that engagement where mm. you can actually have that conversation with them. Yeah. 
And yeah. I think LinkedIn is the same way. It's like, you know, I really feel um, strongly that LinkedIn is a good source of getting clients mm -hmm. if you know the clients that you want. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's a particular industry uh, that you then um, uh, connect with those, those people, those businesses, and have that engaging conversation because it becomes one-on-one -on -one then. You're actually talking to somebody that's on LinkedIn. But You've got to be specific. You've got to know who who that client that client um, that client is. So if it's a particular yeah. industry or whatever, that you might go search them and then yeah. jump onto LinkedIn and have those conversations. Hmm. But certainly, if you can post on Facebook and if you can link link that's a hard word to say link it to LinkedIn, then um, then that helps as well. You're, you're sort of posting in both places. Yeah. 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 There's um, also like the YouTube or a little videos. I mean, it's the people will buy from people. So to be engaging and to show your face and to shoot little videos on your Facebook page that it, that's and, and asking people to be engaging, um, asking for comments, asking for people to, you know, engage with you in some way um, mm. is the best way of being able to start a conversation because then you can dm them and say i'll you know i'll jump into your dm and i'll give you some more advice mm -hmm. that type of thing so it's then then it's person to person mm. yeah um elaine's asked do you have a paid subscription for linkedin just the free version yeah yep, just, just yeah, the free the one. Free one. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I schedule my posts on Facebook. Like you can mm. actually shed, schedule them. Not you can't schedule them a long way in advance, which you could, but you can't. Um, but at least I know that I've got something sort of going in there every now and then. Yeah. 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 Um, Sanjaya, wouldn't it be nice to have repeatable automated social media post systems? So mm. there is such a thing. Um, I used to use SmarterQ. Um, mm which I, I found you put your posts in and then you just schedule them and they rotate around. Um, so there are, there's obviously quite a few. There's Buffer. Buffer, yeah, I've used Buffer before. Mm -hmm. There's a few of them out there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So I might just jump back in and have a look what else there are in those strategies. Um, oh, we've, we do have quite a bit of content around the website. So I think we've just spoken about, you know, um, the social media marketing, um, even accounting software directories, which I'm surprised nobody is actually getting clients from accounting software directories. And I'm well, wondering if I, you want to, sorry? Yeah, you... I do. I, I'm okay. not from zero. I don't get anything oh. from zero, but I do from QuickBooks Online. I've got a yeah. link came through yesterday for someone wanting to talk to me about bookkeeping. So it happens, yeah. but uh, not, so, not that often. Yeah. So for those people that put in the survey that they don't get anybody from accounting software directories, do you actually have a post on an accounting software directory to not get it? Do you want to just give me that follow-up information? Um, mm. Because maybe you're not on an accounting directory and you don't realise that you can be. Mm. Because I, I used to get all the time I got them from zero um but that was like a decade ago um and you know in the time I was getting up to be a gold member so you're sort of higher up but if your profile inside that accounting software director is spot on and you've got a lot of searchability in it uh then it's a lot easier to be found I think as well yeah absolutely absolutely and that's why QuickBooks Online is really good for me is because yeah. when see people search for bookkeepers in uh, Perth, I'm usually I'm at, at the top of the list. But you've yes. got to do some work on your profile to get yourself there, though. So yeah. you need reviews and all that sort of stuff to go to get you up the top there. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we are we are quickly running through our time, and I just want to go through the converting prospects into clients. Mm -hmm. So we won't spend too much time in here. Um, but I do want to talk about how to have those conversations and 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 the how to set yourself up to convert prospects. So now that we've got them, 
it, you know, as a, we've attracted them, we're having a conversation with them, how do we now convert them over? And Peter and I were talking about prospect presentations just before we, we started the meeting today. So that is one aspect that you, you know, create a prospect presentation and we've got a template in there. But um, even though you might not choose to actually go through the PowerPoint presentation, it's um, something that, Peter, you use a lot of the times for mm. meeting new clients to provide yeah. them with information. So what do you do when you have a prospect presentation? Well, the I actually go into PB Central and I show them PB Central and I show them all the areas of the manual for zero and also some of the checklists and show them this is what I do for you. All these all the checks and balances that you have to do is um, using the food bookkeeping system. And mm -hmm. that seems to seems to work really, really well for um, winning over those new clients. Mm. What's the feeling from the client when they see that? Uh, they're excited. They actually um, are uh, you know, saying, wow, you really do know your stuff. You really, you've really got your systems in place to um to do do the bookkeeping for your clients and I said yeah I do and that's what I, that's why I'm a PB licensee is because I've got those systems. Mm. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I know for for myself um that I I had a folder a prospect a, a presentation folder um sitting over the table and flicking through and showing them the checklists. So even though I didn't open up PB Central at the time, as I probably had the books behind me the, the manuals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That I had printed out the checklist and shown them, you know, you know, this is what, <coughs> excuse me, this is what we do for our bass. This is what we do for end of year. <clears throat> mm. And the, the, you know, the additional services that we can provide. The, um, uh, I used to do, I wouldn't call it tax planning because it wasn't, although I was a previous tax accountant, I would do, uh, like in May, I would provide them with information about what they can go to their accountant with and what decisions they need to make before the end of year. So providing them with the services that you can provide, just having, and like even the onboarding process, this is, this is how the onboarding will go. So having a diagram of how things are going to happen. Um, it just gives them that element of like, well, there won't be a surprise. They know exactly what they're signing up for. They see your professionalism and they understand, you know, what, what's going to happen. So. Um, and again, it's trusting. They've got to trust you and you've already shown them what you're going to do for them. So um, it just makes it a whole lot easier. So, Robin, did you do you have something around your prospect presentation or your? You know, um, I actually find I find that zero health check is always good because firstly, I get to see what their books look like. So I know what I'm sort of looking at before I proceed. Um but it also gives them something for free. It gives them an idea around where they're going. So I like the zero um, health check. And I also generally talk about um, some of the processes just about how easy it's going to be for them. So like with the onboarding that my engagement letter will be sent to them, they just need to e-sign it. They don't need any special software um, to add them to my ATO portal. That's the same sort of thing. Um, just kind of take away that so that they don't go, oh, we're going to have to have another meeting. She's going to have to bring, you know, paperwork. I'm going to have to, you know, I can make it quite smooth and easy for them. And I think it just makes it easier for them to sign on with me if they know that I've taken care of that. And, you know, yeah, there's not too much for them to do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, that's awesome. The um the other thing that I did want to share and and possibly discuss if Robin and Peter are doing it well you were talking about the health check mm. um and the ability to do a diagnostic review as well so this is one of our latest um or in relatively new features inside of PB Central um is the diagnostic review, and I don't know if you've had a chance to have a look at it, it's sort of like the health check on steroids. It's a real um, deep dive. You have done a deep dive? No, no, it's a real deep dive. Yeah, into it. yeah, yeah, exactly. 
um, and it ha does have the, the template for it. But the idea is that you, you've got a prospect, you jump into their file, you have a look around, you've got a template as to really detail what is required to be done um, and the health of the actual file and then provide them with a report. So the idea of this more detailed one is that you get paid for it. So you, it might be like $250, $500. You get paid to review their health, provide a report and provide what you need to do to get them back on track or, you know, whatever their issues are. They've usually come to you to say that they're a mess, they don't trust their figures, their bookkeepers messed it up, whatever. Mm. It's a good opportunity to be able to get paid for reviewing it providing a report, giving them a quote, and then them deciding whether they want to take you to, you know, take you on to actually do the work, or at least they've got a report that they could take to somebody else. Yeah. But you've shown them every possible skill and the ability to get the work done and the professionalism by mm -hmm. providing that diagnostic review up front. So it's something that um, I think, you know, is... Um, is good to have in your toolbox. Um, yeah, and I think there's lots of lots of clients, or not clients, lots of people out there that would benefit from that who have got um, bookkeepers that they're not sure of, bookkeepers that have for whatever reason suddenly left, um, and they just they just don't know where they're what's going on or where they're sitting at the moment, um, and that's a fixed price that they know that they can pay someone you. <laughs> to get some answers quickly. And so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we are coming to the top of the hour and I would like to um, provide uh, you know, some, some time for, for questions, um, if anybody does have any questions. But what I'm going to do is pop in a link. If anybody is wanting to have a further chat about um, how pure bookkeeping can assist you in getting clients and then, of course, you know, learning more about pure bookkeeping, about the system and um, this, how you can use the systems to leverage and scale your own business and and, and help you as a, as a great bookkeeper build the business that you love, which is our mission, mission statement as well. So um, that's the link there to, to book a call. Um, you will get a copy of the recording after this with also a, another download of... Um, uh, the seven, it's actually a chapter out of the EMIF book. So you'll get that as a download, which goes through each one of the strategies in a little bit more uh, detail as well. So is, before we finish up, um, are there any questions that um, anybody would like um, to ask? Um, I, I don't think there's any questions that I haven't seen through the chat. I think they're all just comments. Oh. Um, and also perhaps for those that are still on the call, it, what was your big takeaway from today? If you'd like to provide us with, you know, what you got out of today, what was the one big takeaway, um, that you learned from today's content? That would be, that would be awesome. So Peter and Robin, what's your next, um, next client that you're looking for? Uh, well, I'm just onboarding a new client yesterday. They signed my proposal yesterday, so I'm uh, wrapped, and they're one of my now one of my biggest clients. So, but they're not in the re they're a, a trade, so not a retail hospitality. But um, yes, onboarding new clients, which is strange. It happens happens every year at this time of year, where people realise, oh shoot, I haven't done my bazes or I haven't done my bookkeeping, so I better go look for a bookkeeper. So they're all starting to make those inquiries now to look for bookkeepers. So keep an eye out. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm not looking for new clients at the moment, so my books are full and um, they generally are until a client um, sells and, you know, moves on. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, all my clients are really lovely. I I love the, the owner, business owners that I work with are all, yeah, really inspiring in their own way about the businesses that they run. I really, yeah, enjoy enjoy those that I'm working with. Yeah, I, I love that, that you're very clear on 
um, the, the business that you, you've you built, Robin, and, and that, you know, you have an opportunity if you need to put a client on, you will, uh, but you tap it out because you're a lifestyle business. So I love that. Yeah. 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 And thank you um, to Peter and Robin for joining us today. I really appreciate it and the conversations um, that we, we get into. Um, love love our community. Very engaging yeah. and very helpful. I, I love um, that you're always on helping others as well. So thank you for today, for your time and your you. experience. Yeah, yeah, we like talking about our businesses. It's nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah like that's it. awesome. And thank you. And I love that, Elaine. The content was great and have lots of tools to look at to improve my marketing. Fantastic use of my time. Thank you. So thanks, Elaine, for that comment. I appreciate that. Awesome. Good, good. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, and have a fabulous rest of the day and uh, talk to you soon. Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.